did you have a political awakening of sorts? Was there like an inflection point where you're like, wow, I really need to be more involved with this was, uh, I mean, for many people, it was 2016, but was there anything in particular? Or Occupy. A lot of people, it was like Occupy was a big turning point. No, I'm such a lone wolf. I don't get, I I don't, I don't move with uh, trends or movements or anything like that. I'm a cynic as well. So I'm like, man, Occupy, man, this, man, that. It was more like, it was a general buildup to a, to it just had to, it had to come out and it couldn't stay inside my head anymore. Um, but I've always been um, I do like satire because I'm a fan of you know your Gary Lice, Larson's or your whomever these comic strip type artists that kind of poke fun at uh, society. So I grew up on that stuff, reading the Sunday Funnies. So it was in me. Um, but in art school, they were teaching us some of the most mundane stuff ever. So uh, it took a while. I think uh, maybe. 10, 12 years ago, it started to leak in. But yeah, I don't think there was a catalyst, a specific catalyst. So I wasn't there when you were there. So like what topic, like what is the stuff, what does the stuff look like that you were talking about that obviously was interesting to you? Because he's normally only really more of a photography type person. Which there was some here for you. I'm glad there was some here. I mean, yeah. Can you, are you able to show uh, any of the stuff? I don't want to I better bring it to you though, because every time I every time I move, right? No, I'm just yeah, I'm just All curious right. what got yeah. him so interested. Oh, wow. like the the subject matter. Here, here we go. All right, talk amongst yourselves. I'm gonna bring his favorite over here right now. All right. Okay, All right. so this is really. But I mean, this is like. Well, this is what caught my eye. I mean, don't get me wrong. The one about childhood obesity is very like it's it's like scary, uh, in terms of the you know you're seeing like the kid being injected. Right. Like this is one of those things where I look at the art and I'm like, okay, the art's amazing, but the subject matter is nothing I would have hanging on the wall Okay, because it would make me sad. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's cool. Rhetoric 2020. It it has a very political cartoon kind of look to it. Really cool. Yes. So, uh, you know, this was born in 2020 um, for obvious reasons. And... (laughs) It's are amazing. those okay? Are those microphones purposefully phallic, or is it just like, who knows? All right, I'm just <laughs> no, asking. I know. I know you nailed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot of not so subtle stuff in it. You know, I've got the hammer and sickle. Uh, the red, the red um, stripes on the flag are painted over blue, so it's headed in the opposite direction. Right, right. Yellow stars instead of white stars. Um, the one thing that everybody misses when they come in is that the, the crowd is red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. Mm-hmm. And that was my main point. I think you guys, uh, I watched a little bit of what, about what you guys do and think and how you operate. And uh, I don't know, I don't know enough, but I will say that I think we're on the same page that th- this crowd is the same friggin' crowd. It doesn't yeah. matter uh, what shirt they're wearing. It is all white dudes though, which was also on purpose. Right. Um, well, right. It is definitely, there is that, there is that issue, but within the red and blue, that's a fiction. Yeah. That's, that's like political theater. That's not a real thing. Same coin, two sides. Exactly. And it's going in the same friggin' coin slot to do the same thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, our premise is transforming politics into service and the ideas, and we will platform any non-corporate candidate. Um, I don't necessarily have to agree with somebody. I don't need to agree with everybody's policies on everything. And I've had so many people, even in the comment section here, bitch at me when we've had like more conservative guests on because I'm not doing enough to pull them to the left. And I'm like, I don't want to convert them. They're fine the way they are. That's very, you know, condescending of you. I'm just trying to find things we can work on together. So I don't have to agree with people on everything. It's fascinating. But yet I get so much crap for co-mingling and cross-pollinating with people that don't fit certain purity tests. And this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> purity tests. Well, I mean, that's one of the downfalls of the human psyche right now. And I think maybe social media has a lot to do with it because our brains have just turned into these slot machine type things uh, that you, someone has to agree with you on everything. And I have a very unpopular political uh, platform amongst um, artists because I'm not super liberal. I'm supposed to be right. I'm supposed to be way on that side. And I'm just like, depends what we're talking about. It depends what we're talking about. Cause I'll go super uh, fiscally conservative or whatever it is, depending on what we're talking. The, the one thing, that, and it frustrates them because it's just what you're saying. you got to fit in this slot or you got to fit in yeah. this slot. And my first question is why, why? So I can vote in the primaries. 
well, <laughs> fix that. Fix that terrible thing. That's stupid that I can't vote in the primary. So add that to the list yeah. of things that need to be obliterated, like like you said, corporate corporate uh, money in politics, gerrymandering, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no, closed primaries is one of the biggest problems in Florida in particular in any state that has it. And it's you can look no further than our congresswoman, like my congresswoman. The only reason she's able to sit there is because of a gerrymandered district and a closed primary. And so it only requires so few people to keep somebody in office. And most people are unaware of this. Like when we would canvass, most people would be like, oh, yeah, I can't stand her. But if you're not registered as a Democrat, you get no say so. And most people aren't willing to switch over, even though strategically it's the only way in a gerrymandered district to have anything, to get anything done. Talk about what we just did yesterday. What it, oh, so yesterday, Peter and I did some canvassing for a mayor candidate for plantation mayor, Nick Sordal, who we're supporting. And it's a nonpartisan race. And I got to tell you, it was extremely exhilarating <laughs> canvassing without having that hovering over me because when yeah. you're deal- people are so sick and tired of the partisan crap with one rare exception. We met and one he was guy. A, and he was a Republican, which made it even more shocking. Yeah, he, <laughs> he wanted the local politics to be partisan, whereas more, 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 more partisan, partisan. <laughs> whereas I love that they're not partisan. And it's so much of an easier sell. It's so much of an easier sell when you don't have that crap in the way. And it was really much, I I was pleasantly surprised at how much easier it is to canvas in a nonpartisan race. Thanks for watching. If you wanna support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.